Uh, this is the World K Church of Christ in Humble, Texas. And uh, this is Sunday, September 24, 2023. Our Sunday evening message is, It is not legalism to obey the instructions of God. Romans 7, 1 through 17. It is not legalism to obey the instructions of God. Romans 7, 1 through 17. This is a part three. And we're talking about very important that we get this because there's confusion within the law of Moses. Our thinking about it, should I say, not confusion the law. Confusion in the way we think how the law uh, should not be uh, considered a part of Christianity. And it is. There are parts that are considered. And then there are parts that are not. But it is not legalism to obey the law of Moses when the law was in effect. And it's not legalism to bring up parts of Moses' law that still are in effect today. And it's some of the things we're going to talk about in the scriptures. So you have unlearned denominationalism people who will create this doctrine. This is a created doctrine. Sometimes it's error. Sometimes it's them trying to push their point. I do want to correct one thing I mentioned earlier about uh, Job's children were having a birthday. Uh, Brother Frias helped me on that. That didn't say birthday. It said a feast day. So forgive me for that. That message that said that just scratch line through your mind, not birthday, feast day. And so that's what we want to make sure we keep things alive. I don't want to change meanings of words, brother. Something said, changing a meaning of a word, accidental or intentional causes confusion. And we don't want confusion in a large church. So God bless our brother for catching that and thank God for encouragement. Uh, keep praying for me and others as we teach that we don't get things transposed like that. So let's look at it again. It's not legalism to obey the instructions of God. Okay, now, let's look at part three. Let's go quickly if we can to Romans 2 and verse 17. Let's look at that. Romans 2 and 17. All right. Romans 2, 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Now he's speaking to the Jews, the real Jews, and restest in the law. And makest thy boast of God. And knowest his will. And approvest the things that are more excellent. Being instructed out of the law. And are confident that thou thyself are a guide to the blind. And light of them which are in darkness. I want you to know this can't even be repeated by Jews today. At this time. They are doing exactly what the law says. Yeah, they're sinning. But the worship is exact according to the law. They're going to the temple. They're doing it right. So he's talking to this as he's writing this. He's talking to a Jew who would understand why they are lost. He's trying to point out to the individual. An instructor of the foolish. A teacher of bays, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth. In the law. Notice he's sticking with the text the law. Thou therefore which teaches another teaches not thou thyself or thou not thyself. That thou preaches a man should not steal. Dost thou steal? Thou that says a man should not commit a dirt. Dost thou commit a dirt? Thou that abhors idols. Dost thou commit sacrilege? Sacrilege being the worshiping of stocks, idols, or man or animal. So he said, do you do that? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou, thou God. He says, so you breaking the law, he says, dishonorest thou God. He says, this what you do? <laughs> so you break the law, and that's how you honor God? He's pointing out because Jews sin. <coughs> For the name of God is blasphemed on the Gentiles through you as it is written. For circumcision Verily profited if thou keep the law. But if thou be a break of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. This letter is written to Jewish and Gentile Christians. But he's showing them as a Jew, you opposing Christianity and Christians. He's speaking to them. And we're supposed to take this, brethren, and go and battle the Jewish nation. First century and today. They're even worse than they were in the first century. He's given you the tool to fight against people who want to promote the law. That's what he's done. The letter is to the saints. 
We take this. And you're supposed to repeat that. You Look what Paul said to you all who are Jews. We're supposed to repeat that. This is how you battle. This is what you use, the word of God. So when a Gentile rises up, or a saint today, or a Jew, and tries to say, we are legalists for teaching the truth of Christ, he's lost his mind or her mind. Because he's saying, if you are perfectly under the law, he's saying, will you blaspheme the law by disobeying the law? You can't disobey the law. So the seven-day Adventists who promote this type of mentality that they are teachers of faith, they don't even bring an animal. You cannot use the Christ syndrome and the Jewish syndrome together. It will not work. Christ is the end of the law, and they want to combine both. It's such, it's such a lame argument. You can have nothing but compassion. See, you think you've lost an argument, possibly, when they reject you. You think you lost an argument. That's ridiculous. These words are what Paul used to tell the Jews, you guys are wrong, while they're still having the temple there, Solomon's temple, Solomon's porch, all that stuff, while they're still there trying to mimic and go through the law of Moses that has been nailed to the cross. He said, this is my argument to you all. Watch what he points out. He says, for circumcision, fairly proper, if you keep the law, are they keeping the law? No. So if you violate and don't love your brother, all the other things are part of the law, you're not keeping the law either. He says, but if thou be a break of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Your circumcision, the thing that you have as a male cut, the process and the operation, it's like you've never been circumcised if you don't keep the law. It goes back to the beginning of the covenant with you and God. He says, therefore, if the uncircumcision, which is Gentiles, uncut, keep the righteousness of the law, Shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Circumcision isn't legalistic under the law of Moses. It's what you're supposed to do. But he's pointing out if a non-Jew who isn't circumcised, if he loves his brother, if he loves his fellow man, like the Samaritan story Jesus used. Samaritan is known for being wicked. He says he showed love to his neighbor. If he does that, you look at that and say, well, man, that's just like what well, circumcised you supposed to do? You can't deny the action being right. So it says, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature. Now, circumcision is by nature. No one is born circumcised unless there's some accident. You are born uncircumcised. He says, it's by nature. That's, God made Adam is not circumcised. Let me show you this. Adam is not circumcised. God never cuts him. At least he, if he did, he didn't tell us about it. It's not in the Bible, so we can't say what's not in the Bible. Adam is born like we are born, uncircumcised. He said by nature. He said, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. He said, by the letter, you stand as a Jew by the letter. I'm a bona fide Jew, and I can prove it. I'm circumcised. The male would say. He said, you use that to transgress the law. He said, how is that possible? Here's a guy born uncircumcised that will listen to the law of Moses in his heart and obey it. Even though he's in another land or something, he's not going to be doing the things on the Sabbath and all that. So Paul is saying if he does all that, if he does all the things Moses is telling and he isn't cut, he says he would validate y'all are crooks because you've been cut and you can't do it. So he's pointing out it's something to do with the inner man. It's not the out. It isn't that the flesh of the man get cut and he's automatically holy. No. No, that was the signal of a covenant. As I said, brother, the reason it's so important is to understand if someone want to come and tell you, are you circumcised or was your father circumcised? You say no. So see, you are and say, say no, you don't understand. If you were circumcised, then you would know to leave Moses and come to Christ. That's, that's how blind you are. See, you are, you are the teachers. Of how these three dispensations fit today. What portions do we use? 
what was mentioned in the law of Moses in Genesis is before Moses. That happened before Moses. Those people all the way to Moses honor and praise God. Noah and the others. Abraham. Before Moses. So when you look back at that, you have to understand that's another dispensation that has nothing to do with Moses. They love God. And there are things they did and said about God that hold fast to the thing. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. That's before Moses. So that's the first dispensation that happened. And during that time frame, Adam comes, so we still teach that. We don't change that. That didn't need to be written again. That's still hold fast. So we need to know that. So what does he say? He says, verse 20, for he is not a Jew. Watch what he says, which is one hour. You're not a Jew because you have Jewish features, even in the first century. Jewish cuttings as a male, Jewish beard and trimmings and all the Jewish clothes. Neither is that circumcision. He said, neither circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one era. The only Jews that were saved were the Jews that inwardly loved God within their spirit. That's why the Lord says in the Old Testament, oh, that they had a heart that would listen. Heart be circumcised. And they wouldn't. That's why the Lord circumcised our heart in baptism. Cuts away the sinful desires from the heart. Writes his testament on our heart. The spiritual man. And you have to have it removed by sin. And circumcision is that of the heart. Look at that. In the spirit body. This is so detailed. And not in the letter. See, now they'll look at this. and They'll, they'll get excited. I'm telling you, they'll get excited with you. It's the, see, it's not the letter, brother. It's not the letter. You're legalistic. He's lost his mind. Look at it again. But he is not a Jew, which is one in. Remember, this is written in the first century. And circumcision is that of the heart. He's talking about real Jews that's been cut. The circumcision was always in their heart. They had to have a heart that would adhere to the Lord's word. So spiritually, Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. Their spirit was different. They listened to Moses. They sinned and then they repented. Joshua made a mistake in a battle and he repented. Called forth the individual. We should have talked to you. Lord, before we do, we made a league with somebody. Oh, we shouldn't have did that. And he repented. So he said, in the spirit and not in the letter. So just because you're a Jew and you're circumcised, the eighth day, you're the stock of Abraham like Paul was, that, that doesn't make your inward man right. Because Jews sin. That doesn't make the inward man right. Whose praise is not of men, but of God. So the praise, not, what, how is it a praise of man? Because men will say, you've been circumcised, praise God. Oh, he's been cut. Does he wear his beard right? Amen. Does he wear the right coat? Does he have the fun that's on? Oh, praise the Lord. See, he's saying that's praise of men. They see the hour. The inward is what the praise of God gives. You're faithful. You love the Lord. As David said, when I'm in my house, I'm going to watch what I say. And I'm going to buy myself. And I watch what I think. That's the key, brother. And that's what you and I have to hold on to. So he's pointing out the spiritual Jew, which you and I are the mimic of. That's why Paul says, our forefathers. First Corinthians 10, there's nothing but Gentile population in Corinth. There's some Jews that's a mingle, but that's Gentile land. But he says, our father. He didn't start to say, I speak to Jews only, of them to know the law. No, that's to all. They're our, Moses is our forefather. Abraham is our forefather. Because we're children of Abraham by faith in Christ. Galatians tells us that plain. Okay, let's look at some more. Romans 7 and 6. We're going to move far. Romans chapter 7, verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law. How? That being dead, where we were held. See, the law had you. See, when you sin, the law like somebody that grabs your throat. Oh, I've got them to squeeze the life out. Oh, I can't wait to pop your throat and cut your jugular circulation and get you. So it's okay. We're being dead where we were once held. It's holding you that we should serve in newness of spirit. And not in the oldest of love. 
See, they, they blow this one too. How's your spirit made anew in baptism? The very people that teach this nonsense are unbaptized. They're not even baptized. They don't have a new spirit. They've been made not yet anew. And they try to hold this. The oldest of, what makes the oldest? The oldest of the letter condemns you. But the new spirit commends you and gives you life. So because you have a new spirit, you're not under the old condemnation of the law. I cannot eat pork. I go to church on Saturday. It's not going to church on Saturday is a bad thing. It's no longer a thing to do to serve God. So now he's just saying you can't be judged because you don't go to church on Saturday. It's not a crime to eat hog meat. It is in the law of Moses to not do it. And Peter is told, rise, kill, and eat. In 1 Corinthians, uh, Acts chapter 10, forgive me, Acts 10. So, is he saying you can't be judged anymore? You can't be judged in drink. You have to have a drink offering. You couldn't bring no water. You have to bring wine, whiskey, sometimes wine, sometimes whiskey. You have to pour out a drink or you have to bring a drink offering to the priest. You're not judged. They're not going to say, did you bring your drink off? There's no drink off anymore. Why is that a problem? Because under the law of Moses, you were judged by that. And if you didn't do it, oh, another sin. The law got you by the throat again. And that's important for us to know, brethren. Let's look at some more here. One understanding of legalism is to obey an instruction of the law of Moses that is no longer used in Christianity. We've studied that. We're going to end with this part to close this portion of the study out Galatians 5. And see, see, the individual just how legalism, it's like, boy, you just like, man, this is going to be a battle here. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where with Christ had made us free. So, what is the liberty Christ made us free? And not being tangled again with the yoke of bondage. In Christ, you are free only in Christianity, not the yoke of bondage of the law of Moses. When you hear people talking about tithes, it doesn't matter tithes and offerings. Or just the word tithe, the tent, if they're in a church or not. It's like you have no concept of the law of Moses. So either you're crooked and doing it intentionally, mean you're unstable or unlearned. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to share with you the truth. And lesson done. Step complete. Are you ready to take the test? Will you obey? And then that's between you and God. Behold, our Paul said unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you not. So if you get circumcised for a religious benefit, following the law of Moses, Christ can no longer profit you. Man, when Christ can't profit you, you're on your way to hell. Verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to the whole law. People get circumcised because of health issues. He'll be like, man, what you talking about? This is obviously... I'm trying to make myself right with God. Justified. Your soul will burn in hell. Tortured. And you will never die. If you are not justified by the Lord. The Lord has to justify you. He says you're right with me. And you will never receive justification from the Lord. If you base circumcision. Not just because it's physical. But because it is not in Christianity. If you base circumcision upon salvation, you're not justified any longer. And Christ can't profit you. That's what it's about, bro. A lot of people are circumcised. It's not a crime. That he is a death to the whole law. So now you got to do the whole law. You better figure out how to get that temple rebuilt. You better find some Jewish priests. I ain't talking about them people with them beards and curly hair. I'm talking about real sons of Aaron. And you'll never get that. See, the Lord destroyed the record intention. No one can validate I am a true son of Aaron today. I don't know how you would. That record was in the temple. That's why I was destroyed. The Lord let you know you'll never reconstruct this. You'll never reconstruct the law of Moses. See, when God destroyed, when, this is what the Lord says, simplicity. If I close the door, it's closed. You'll never, you'll never find out who the real sons are. You'll never do it because you could reconstruct the priesthood. No one could stop you. If you could prove a true Levite, then you could fake at least a priesthood. You will never find that out. God says, I close the door. 
I'm not leaving off. You'll never reconstruct it again. Because I have to kill you if you do. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to lock it up where you can't. That's why. And those records were kept in the temple for a purpose. So the law was okay. Because I know I got a plan. I'm going to destroy all this stuff. And you'll never be able to do it again. And God is helping us. And helping them. Look at verse 4. Christ has become of none effect in you. Whosoever you are justified by the law. My dear brethren. Justified. When a person says. I, not, we want to be patient with saints. Sometimes saints will say. I paid my tithes, baby. Okay, now you just got to help say, you mean you mean you give? You don't mean like you give like a tenth, like you have to under Moses, right? No, no. Okay, good. That's what I Because they go, amen. Yes, and they go, no, we don't tithe anymore. You can still give that same amount. Just get that out of your mind that it's tithe called the Moses. Because you don't want to do that. You want to just give. But if that's the number you want to give, that's fine. But just know, know that, right? Because if you, you won't be justified anymore if you go back on the Moses law. And they may go, well, I didn't know that. I've taught people, I go, I don't know that. So yeah, just, you can still get a certain amount. I'm not telling you what to give. And I'm telling you, you're wrong for giving them. I'm saying, don't say, you know, I'm tithing like Moses taught because then you'll be no longer justified because you're trying to justify yourself by a mosaic or practice. We just can't do that. And they go, okay. Some people may wrangle. That's all right. Just study about it because then you'll find it's like the iceberg is deeper. They really into Moses stuff. I don't think a woman should come around the church while she's on a cycle. What? You got some heavy stuff. Now you don't know what's going on. So that's why some things are exposed and you find it's deep. Okay, let's look at, uh, he said, you're fallen from grace. Brother, you know, without grace you can't be saved. You're saved by grace through faith. Do you know if you and me fall from grace, hell got a seat with our name on it. You're locked. You can't get free. Even Jesus can help. You fall from grace. He brought grace to catch you, to lift you. You fall from grace, that's it. You fall off the platform of salvation, like falling off the world. How will you, how will you survive? There's no oxygen outside of our atmosphere. You die. So you cannot fall off of Christ, the foundation, which brings grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness. How? By faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision or better anything. So it doesn't matter if you're circumcised. No uncircumcised. It doesn't matter if you're uncircumcised. But faith which worketh by love. Your faith works by love. Your love for God causes you to have faith in the Lord. Verse 7. You did run well. Past tense. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So these first six things we read, this is a disobedience of truth. That's why it's so important, brethren. Brother, you know what? Let me tell you something. Strong leadership is needed in the church of Christ. A good group of strong elders, deacons, and Bible teachers, faithful brothers and women, faithful sisters, can help a brother that teaches 10% tithes. They can pull them aside. That's why you can never let me, as an evangelist, disrespect the other leaders. You can't do it. Can't do it, brother. I'm warning you. I'm trying to warn you for your own salvation. I can't go, you know, man. I'm, I'm an evangelist and an elder and a man that's going to die. How about that one? So it still doesn't give me any authority past the text. So if I was to start teaching that for some hook or crook, you would sit down and say, hey, brother, we're going to try to help you with this one. You know, when people get off. You know, this is why you can't teach the tithe. And that's why you can't use those terms unless you're saying what they did. And then you go, we don't do that today. You got to make sure you keep that help. Or brother, I just think, you know, it's a good tool for teaching people how to give. You know, and I'm going to stick with saying tithes and offering. Uh, well, brother, you know, we want to ask you nicely, you know, brother, we just respect the father and the brotherhood. You know, you've been a lot of being the beloved. This is as sweet as you can be. Brother, uh, the two lips in front of my face, I control See, now that's, that's a fighting word. You got me? It's a fighting word. Now I said, well, brother, look here. Let's do this. For right now, let's let somebody else preach and teach for just a little while because we want to work with you more on that. Brother, this is my pulpit. Now you, now you now the axe is laid. Okay, brother. You don't have to say nothing. We well, you know next Sunday, unless you kill us all, we're going to rise up and let the church know why you're not allowed to teach anymore. And we're going to let them know the statements you made to us in this meeting to let you know you're dangerous. 
Brethren, if you don't do that, shame on you. You will break my heart. Because I obviously either didn't do my job right or y'all just turned evil. And either way, my heart is broken. Why? Because you've been taught through the word of God to stand up in love and protect. This is the Lord's pulpit, not mine. If people would do that, you would not have these teachers that teach that. But brethren are very slick when they so-called anoint in their mind a leader. They pick people that are weak or they got some dirt on. You should never have fear telling anybody in private prayer of strength you need in areas. Because when they bring that up publicly, make sure you do this one thing. After they embarrass you, you know, I told that brother that in private and counseling. And I want y'all to know he used it against me to destroy me. And he's going to destroy you too. And that's what he is. He wants to run this church. That's how you make a confession when it's time for prayer. And then now you got now you got saints on post. Man, let's go to work then. You mean you said that privately? Y'all were getting and, and he brought up to destroy. You right. He brought up something against me. He said, now you got it. You know why we want to do that? Because some of us still remain in crookedness. Little dirt still under the table. That's why you got to clean the house, bread start. Clean you out, clean you out. With his sock, tell the Lord, wash you clean, and then you can stand against wickedness. That's how people take over the church. Now, I just told y'all to protect you from me because that's what God put in my heart. Now, I might turn crazy next Sunday, but you know what to do now, don't you? Praise God. So, that's remember something, brother, and understand Paul has said this. Let's move forward. We've got a couple more things. We'll wrap up. Another area of legalism is to forget about judgment, justice, and mercy. This is another area of legalism, which Jesus addressed while the law was still intact, which are called by God weightier than giving money to God accurately. Look at, if you will, the understanding behind another thought. Legalism is to be unable to know the weightier matters of the law where one takes a favorite law and discredits or discards the rest of the law of Moses even. Takes a favorite law. And the same thing can be done in Christianity. That would also be legalism within Christianity. Well, when you try to make baptism legalism, you've lost your mind. Baptism is the spiritual circumcision that the Lord gives because he knows, okay, that's what I wanted them to have in Judaism. And I do give it now in Christianity. See, the law controls. Look at Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. And let us look at, if you will, verse number 23. Woe unto you, Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, with an exclamation, because that's how he said it. There is a notation in the Greek, in the writing, which the translator says that means this needs an exclamation in our language because he said it not like one to his scribes and Pharisees hypocrites no one to his scribes and Pharisees hypocrites he strengthened them you are against Christ the anointed of God for you pay tithe look at the details of anise mint and cumin ointments different spices they gave they were accurate on giving and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave those undone. You should have put judgment, mercy, and faith at the top. Because with judgment, you'll get justified or justice. You'll get justice done with judgment. But you still should have been given a tenth of Anas men in common. Why? Because... The law required you gave 10% of all possessions. See, that's what people understand. They were good. And they knew that. They, those Pharisees knew. That's of all what we possess. Yeah. But then they forgot about judgment, mercy, and faith. And the law said, that's heavier. What does he mean? That's what he means, heavier. He said, only the other undone. But he said, but when you come down to it, the heavy part that me and my father and the Holy Spirit, we look at, if we want these three. Not this giving of the other three to be considered, I got to do this. 
I got to do it. See, if you gave good, didn't do judgment, mercy, and faith, the law says, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. The law revolved around the two greatest of his command. Look at Matthew 22 and verse 35. That's why, that's why he, he points out this will cause you to have mercy if you love your brother as yourself, your neighbor. Matthew 22 and 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the law of thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. If you lock that one down, okay, you're almost there. Because that one will prompt you to love the neighbor as yourself. But if you lock that one down and don't utilize the energy it gives you, you will not love the neighbor. So, so therefore, you're not loving the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength because you're going to fail when the test comes. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Now see, he asked them a question. Watch what he asked them. What is the great commandment in the law? He said, the great. Jesus said, hold on. There's two commandments that are required to achieve what you want. One is love the Lord your God with all your soul, heart, and mind. Another writer says strength. He says, and the second is like I said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There it is, brethren. Um, these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So all that the law of Moses said in every writing of all the prophets, all the way to Malachi, you could hang it on if you love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, as all the writer says, your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. You got it. That's why Jesus healed the withered hand, man. He knows it's a Sabbath. He knows it's going to cause confliction. But he understands. You know, I remember Proverbs don't have what I'm supposed to give this guy make him wait till tomorrow. Jesus is perfect about it. And then at the same time, I love him myself. I don't want to be here right now. I would not want to wait till tomorrow because I don't have to. Because is it wrong to do good on the Sabbath? See, he had all the points to fight them. So we have to understand this is what you need. This does not mean disregard those. We know that. This means if you keep these two, the others will be kept. Why? Because these two will fuel your desire to keep the others. This is so important, brethren, for us to understand. This is critical, and this is how you and I will live forever. We've got to accept it. It's critical. We cannot shoot rocket flash statements out of our mouth. That's legalism and just shoot out unless it actually and truly is legalism. Once again, recap, we understand legalism taking the law of Moses that cannot be brought over into the New Testament. Also, legalism is dealing with having favorite commandments and disregarding mercy and judgment and understanding. Notice one of the things he said which was, which was so sad. It was so sad. One of the things they left out, brethren, is faith. They lacked faith in all different types of applications. Faith that God knew what he was doing. It just scratched apart not knowing what Jesus did. They lacked this before Christ came. And that's why he's come. he came to repair and adjust the Jews and, and repair and adjust the Gentiles, get them prepared to bring the two that opposed because they opposed, even though they opposed each other, they both were lost without Christ. But he brought them together. So I'm going to save you. You're closer to me. And I'm going to save you. You're farther from me. But you got to come both to me. That's what Christ was saying. We have to understand that. Brethren, the only way you could be legalistic in Christianity is if you violate faith, mercy, and judgment. Because that still carries on. You could be the best giver on the earth. The, I mean, the Lord would say, as far as actual giving, like the old, the widow might, that's the guy. But he lacks faith. He got judgment and mercy. For some reason he lacks faith in me. It's, got, it's three. It's complete. Judgment, mercy, and faith. They're heavy, and you must be able to carry them. The other stuff is light. Giving is light compared to judgment, mercy, and faith. What do your brethren? What what do your brethren lack?
for some reason, they lack judgment when discussing divorce. They lack mercy when discussing divorce. Just one, I'm to pick one topic. And they lack faith when discussing divorce. You know what they don't believe? They literally do not believe that you could repent, get married again, and be a better Christian. They don't judge right that you were not properly taken care of in the marriage. They don't have mercy if you acknowledge I did sin, but I want to change. And I have faith God can fix you. Anytime somebody treats you funny after sin, I'm going to tell you what they lack. The one thing is clear, faith. They don't think God can fix you. And this is how they'll, they'll, this how they'll fix their lives. We close up. I've heard the lie try to get fixed before all my day. I'm not talking about what God can do. I'm talking about you. That's stupid because you don't fix you. The statement itself is an oxymoron. You don't fix you. It's an oxymoron. God fix you. So here we go again. You talking about God. Now if you fix you, then I could say, yeah, I don't think you're tooled enough. <laughs> and you may not be. But if God fixed you, I can never say, I'm not talking about what God fixed. God fixed. I'm talking about you. You don't fix you. Let's get it one more time. You don't fix you. God does. You talking about God can't fix the person. And you're going to die in hell for disrespecting the Father. I love you enough to tell you. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 3. Let's wrap it up. For delivering you first of all that which all shall receive. How that Christ died for sin according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I love that part. Look at all the list of who saw him. Look at Mark 16 and verse 15. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel with every creature. He that believeth baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Look at the book Understanding and Comprehension in Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. The gospel preaches itself. Acts 2, 36. Therefore let our house of Israel know sure that God had made the same Jesus here and crucified. Both Lord and Christ. You lose the whole Muslim organization right there. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you and to your children, and all that are far, even as men of the Lord our God shall call. And men of the words did he testify to God, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that God received his word of baptized, and saying that they were added to them about 3,000 souls. What do they continue in? Brethren, they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Acts 2 47, praising God, having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The gospel preaches itself. Acts chapter 8 and verse number 3. This is the preaching of the gospel. No way you can err in this because it didn't do nothing but sin. Acts 8 35. Then Philip opened his mouth, began to say scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. Look at that specific. As they went on their way, they came to certain water and a eunuch said see here is water what the hell me to be baptized Philip said if thou believe with all thy heart thy mess he has to say I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God he commanded to have to stand said it went down both to the water but Philip and the eunuch and he baptized and look at the rejoicing I met a Muslim one day an older guy very very much into the walk of Muslim he called Jesus at the end he said he's my savior Watch this now. And he says, he's going to come back one day for me. Watch this guy. And I said, you don't believe that because you say he's not the son of God. I said, he's going to come back. But it's not going to be a pleasant encounter because you deny he's the son of God. I said, if you accept he's the son of God, you can be saved. You can be baptized. And just smile and walk off. See, he's trying to incorporate some thoughts of Christianity. See, that's what the heretic Mohammed did. He taught some portions of Christianity intermingled into his own concoction, which makes it dead in the pot. There's a billion plus people that believe that lie. That's tragic. Thank God we do not.
1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's the church, Colossians 1, 18. Whether it be Jews or Gentiles, whether it be bond or free, have all been made to drink into one spirit. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. The like figure went to even baptism is also now save us. Man, you knock down with the reading of the gospel and other scriptures can be added. Every false denomination that exists. It doesn't matter who they are. Whether they hate God, whether they hate Jesus, whatever it is, whether they hate you, you knock them down. How does it say? Not the putting away of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When he rose from the dead, this is the pattern. You got to die, be buried, and resurrect. Who is gone into heaven, the right hand of God, angels, authorities, and powers, being made subject unto <coughs> Him. Look at Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things without the Son of Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. But you may be tried. The devil got a mission. Shall have tribulation 10 days. If you don't have faith in the dead, I'll give thee a crown of life. Listen, brethren. The devil will try anything. Anything. To get your soul. I want to tell you something about Satan so you'll know. He get mad, but God going to be glad. The depth of Satan and how deep he will go, you will never know. You'll never know. He comes before God and doesn't honor him. He comes before Christ. Did you notice in Job? Come before Christ and Matthew. Did you see him give honor? Do you understand the being that you deal with can only not get you because God is with you. He has no respect for God. Fear is not the respect that God honors. Fear is just, I don't want to do certain things. I know he might handle me. No. Respect, he has none. Zero for God. You don't see any praise given. You don't see any honor. You see the weakness of the demons. How they cause a man to run. And beg? Did you hear the devil beg? Let me approach you and test you. Harm me not. You don't know who you're dealing with. But you better learn. And let me share something with you real fast. You don't know how great you are. And the greater you get, the more you get on his radar. And when he come for you, he's going to bring things. He's going to bring things you never saw in your life. You're going to hear and see things. You never experience in your life. That's when you know. He's, he's sending out either some stronger demons. Or maybe he trying to come at me one on one. Because he got with Peter to try and get Jesus. And he got in definitely a fact. As Brother Fred said. He definitely got inside of Judas. Because it took everything Satan had. To convince Judas. Let me in you. Because Judas used to be a good dude. You got to understand what he did to him. It took everything Satan had to make Judas sell out Christ. But he said one thing. Take him away safely. See, don't you see the good still? Take him away safely. But Judas didn't know. Man, when the devil gets you, brethren, there is no hope for you. I'm sorry to tell you. You're done. I'm telling you, you're done. Watch what you say. Watch what you do. Watch how you think and watch what you let in you. Watch the spirit you let in you. Know when something getting around you not right. I'm telling you, you can't whoop him on your best day. You can't whoop him. When he got you, you're done. That's what the Lord said. When he come back in, seven more, even a demon attack, seven more stronger. He didn't say Satan was one of them. He said in the last case, is worse than the first. But when Satan comes, man, Satan bring it. Am I boasting or not? He's a fool and a loser. Like Brother Fritz, he's a loser. But you remember, brethren, don't you get yourself involved with people that's too close to the devil. You stay away from these tarot card readers. Sue says they are poison on the earth. You stay away from people that do not blush at sin. Homosexuals. A man looking like a woman. A woman looking like a man. Stay away from people who don't blush at sin. They're learning the depth of Satan so there's no fear no more. You watch yourself. You watch what you hear. You watch what you listen to. 
because God loves you enough to give his son. If you need to be baptized, stay standing when we sit down. If you need prayer, do the same. Hold your hand up if you're too weary or too discouraged or whatever too you may be to stand up. Just hold your hand. I want to encourage and it's something we need to understand, brethren. We have a mission. You heard Brother Keith wonderful teaching, Brother Frizz. They do a lot of teaching showing you about the world today, different criti critical crooks and stuff like that. I want you to remember also when you take a life, the Lord is clear. Eternal life is not in you. It can't stay. Something about when you kill, eternal life can't stay with you. Sorry. You got to have a redo. It'll be difficult. The battle is fierce. Satan is down. He don't want that soul to get lost twice. It takes a lot to take a breath from a person. When you kill an innocent life, innocent blood is even worse. The Lord said, the land would be poisoned. He said, you let somebody shed innocent blood. America is a poison, cursed nation, and so is every other nation that allows abortion. Innocent life. A baby can't even defend itself in a stomach. That is zero tolerance. Zero. Zero. No one should want to deal with you. You're a murderer. You kill the E. You know, people used to say it's like taking cattle from a baby. How about taking life from a baby? You ever hear people say that's like taking life from a baby? You don't hear that because it's ugly. Oh, man, that's like taking life from they say candy because it's sweeter. That's like taking life from a baby. When you say the people jerk their hair around, abortion. And you, you, you'd be surprised when many people freeze up. There are doctors that will tell you masturbation is okay. You know that's vile, abusing yourself in America, vile, inordinate affection. You know, there are doctors that tell you it's okay. It's healthy for your marriage. Do it and we will watch you explode. You go and explode, you go and explode. Doctrinally, morally, something going to go wrong. You don't know what you're doing. You have no idea. You're in the deep sins of Satan. How he knows I can go and I can get that soul and I will take it like candy from a baby. And God will let him walk out with it. Because you didn't deserve the possession. You're in an area you know nothing about battle there. Because the Lord tells you don't go. He tells you in Revelation. That the ones that don't know the depth of Satan. I got them. So you know the depth of Satan. I don't have you. You're done. Goose is cooked. May God bless you. Remember understand. Don't kill nobody. And please don't kill yourself. You know, somebody said, well, we're going to talk about abortion all the time. Yeah, because we got children here. We got a little girl in the back. One day she's going to be a woman. My job, my job is to make sure she heard from my lips. Don't do it, baby. Don't do it. God will protect you and bless you. Don't listen to your foolish relatives. No. Ignorant lover and definitely no knucklehead saint. They don't have the guts to speak for the Lord after sucking his ass and eating his food and then getting his Holy Spirit. No hope for a soul like that, brother. May God help you and keep you, protect you. You walk with the Lord blindly. He will never lead you into the ditch. Remember, because he's preserving you for a great day. He says, when I put my stuff together, I'm going to gather you. you coming with me. Oh, that day going to happen. And we don't care when. We just want to know that we're in. Whatever you need, come while together.